how can you be gay, lesbian, or bisexual if there are no genders? That presupposes genders. What are the main arguments to saying as a Christian that homosexuality and transgenderism is right or wrong? If you read through the Bible, the Bible is a book built on man-women relationships. It's built on procreation. And obviously, when you have relationships that either don't do that or do that in a way that can bring a lot of pain and suffering, whether it's polygamy, whether it's adultery, whether it's fornication, the Bible is going to come out against that because it goes against the purpose as to why we're here. From a natural law perspective, when you look at the the man and the women together, obviously men and women are put together to procreate. The only thing a man and a woman can't do alone is procreate. We need one another in order to procreate. So the Bible and even natural law points to the fact that nature or nature points to the fact that the man woman a relationship is the ideal. One quick thing about transgenderism, if, if we could. This, again, is a very sensitive issue. But I think that if you really think about it, transgenderism presupposes fixed genders. Why? Because if I'm a man biologically, but I think I'm a woman mentally, then I have to have some idea of what a man is and some idea of what a woman is to know there's a difference, to know there's a mismatch. And I also have to have some idea of what a man is and some idea of what a woman is to want to make the so-called transition. Because if gender is completely fluid, transgenderism would make no sense at all. Do you see the point? And one of the issues in the LGBTQ community right now is there's a bit of an eternal war going on between the L, the G, the B, and the T. Why? Because if, if the T has its way, if the T's have their way, there are no genders, then the L, the G, and the B don't exist. Because how can you be gay, lesbian, or bisexual if there are no genders? That presupposes genders. Uh, In fact, even the feminists are concerned about this. Why? Because if there are no genders, there are no women. And if there are no women, there are no women's rights, which is why J.K. Rowling, the author of the Harry Potter series, is sticking to her position that if you're going to say gender is fluid, you've just ruled women out of existence, and she won't stand for that. Guess what? She's right. So if you look at this logically, not emotionally, there are a lot of issues. In fact, uh, Dr. Paul McHugh from... Uh, John Hopkins University, he's a psychiatrist, likened transgenderism to anorexia. He says, if there is a mismatch between your mind and your body, which is what happens in gender dysphoria, and what also happens in uh, anorexia, we don't try and affirm the person's psychological state. We tell them that their psychological state doesn't align with reality. We try and fix them psychologically. We don't try and fix them with surgery. We would never say to an anorexic, you know, you're right, you're overweight, let me give you liposuction. We would say, no, that would be harmful. If there is a mismatch between your mind and your body, you fix that problem with psychiatry. You don't fix a a mental issue with surgery. Yet that is what many in our culture want to do. 